welcome to PPS um, and it's an exciting day. As you can see, I have another human being here with me in the studio. Um, it's Kerry Duffy from Cook Lenses. Hello. Thank you, Jim. Hello, hello indeed. Uh, two meters, we're two, across. We are two meters um, apart. Um, it's, thank you. I, check, I, well, I could check it on this, but this is a foot scale. Otherwise I could put it to two meters. If only, <laughs> if only we were metric. <laughs> First of all, thank you for coming. Thank you for it's inviting me. Great, for, great to join us and see you in person. And today is an exciting day. We're gonna talk about your range of spherical lenses. Yeah, um, everything from the Mini S4 through to the S7s, which you have here on this lovely uh, Arri Mini LF. Well, we got a cheap camera in yeah. so we could have a little play. For our viewers who, who don't know who Cook are, could you explain really what Cook is? Yeah, uh, so Cook Optics, we are the manufacturer of Cook Lenses. Mm -hmm. Cook Lenses as a lens brand or known as Cook Lenses um, started in 1893. So before Brexit. Before Brexit, as I say, we're in our third, <laughs> we're in our third century of business. Wow, wow. <laughs> that takes you back a bit, doesn't it? It does take me back, um, yeah. Um, uh, started off with stills lenses and um, then moved uh, heavily into the motion picture um, market in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s, all the way through. And um, yeah, we've been making lenses for a long time through a lot of history of motion picture. Um, a lot of which people don't even know about mm. or just jumps to mind, um, particularly. I mean, when I think of Cook, two things come to mind. First of all, handmade in England. Yeah. 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 Okay. And secondly, it's that sort of legendary Cook look, if you yes. like. Yes. Yeah, there is there is the Cook look and there's, there's two parts to that legend of Cook look. One mm. of them being um, when the original Speed Pancros came out, they were the fastest motion picture lens at the time which enabled uh, easier to shoot studio rather than outside sets, which was, you know, lit by sunlight. Um, and those lenses later in life were rehoused in the digital era to give a different look and uh, for modern lenses that were built. Um, so saying the Cook look, the Cook look isn't one thing. Mm. It is a progression of a philosophy. Yes, because times change and fashions change. Absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's funny to say, but with lenses, it is quite fashion oriented. Oh, it's a Vogue business. It's a very Vogue business. A Vogue business. I haven't yeah. heard that before. I like yeah. that. A Vogue yeah. business. Yeah, uh, it's, um, it's all about, well, it's all about the look. So we've coined our own look. We call it the cook look. Um, and today, um, as you know, Jim, coming from a uh, analog background. I, I am that old. Yes, yes. exactly. Where, where stocks and uh, the process played a part uh, physically with those who were capturing the image. Today, the digital, be it whoever makes the digital yep. camera, means that part of that workflow is taken away from the cinematographer. So his input, his real input is a lot to do with what he chooses with his lens. I've heard there's another famous phrase that I'll steal, yeah. um, which is that lenses are the new film stock. Yeah, they are. In they, that sense. Yeah, they are in that sense. Well, they are, they are how you stamp your character on your image. Yeah. Um, that cannot be taken away from you. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. it's baked in. Yeah. And they can't destroy it in post. No. In, another phrase yeah. that springs yeah, to mind. Yeah, I mean, you, and, and obviously, um, depending on what your project is, what you want to do, how much, how big it is, how small it is, what camera you're using. At Cook, we make uh, a wide range, actually, yeah. of, of lenses. All um, PL? All PL, yeah, um, or LPL now. Yes. We can do an LPL mount for, for, for Aries. Okay. Um, and, or if you have a uh, L mount or an E mount, you can buy for mirrorless. Yep. Uh, adapters. Yes, of course. That can. you can put the PL mount onto. Of course, so, can. Um, and we will discuss that. Yeah. Because we've got another another bag of tricks to yeah. to show people in our next <laughs> film. If you if you if you stay watching, yeah. um, currently we've got actually a PL adapter on, into the LPL here. Yeah. On, on the LF, which yeah. is which is nice. Yeah, nice which is simple. another thing that obviously yeah. Ari have done with 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 making the the minis and the L, the LF series of cameras uh, LPL. They've done their adapter so yeah. that you can fit. Uh, PL mount lenses because PL mount glass is the majority stock of what rental is. houses have. Absolutely. Yeah. Now talking spherical. Yep. Because that's where we are today. Uh, yep. Tell me what ranges you have. So in a spherical, um, I'll start from bottom to top. Yes. Um, so 
we do have what we could be versed in the commercial um, prosumer sense as an entry level lens. Yep. Um, which is our Mini S4. Yep. The Mini S4 is a T28 lens um and it is a smaller front it's a 95 mil front yep. here so it's a smaller lens um and super 35 in fact not many people know this one of those facts it has the biggest super 35 image circle area of all of our super 35 mil lenses do forgive that call we're in a live situation people. there's someone <laughs> someone ordering one someone ordering uh, one yeah, as yeah, we yeah. speak so yep. um oh so 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 that super 35 lens will actually cover at certain focal lengths will cover a full frame sensor well yeah i mean all Almost. super 35 millimeter lenses or not all, well once you start getting past 50 mil yeah you start the image circle is expanding onto yep. the sensor and you can get past but the minis have as um their standard image circle it's it's a bit larger than the five eyes and the fours so that's the mini so if S4. you had a, a say a crop sensor perhaps with yeah. a with, with a wider gate yeah you'd you might you start yeah. getting away with it earlier yep i like yeah. that uh, and also when when people consider what their the format they're shooting and therefore the size of the sensor you just mentioned that magic word crop are you 185 are you yeah. uh letterbox an anamorphic sort of 240 aspect yeah. ratio you two to one so um yeah that, that 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 helps with that sometimes you get away with your corners yeah because you're, or, in, you're in the meat that's the vogue do you like the corners do you uh, true do you like true, the corners true. perhaps that's what we're after yeah exactly so um after the minis comes the um well it's a it's a real staple is the s4 the cook yep. s4 yeah um the cook s4 has been around for 20 something years now 23 maybe 24 years um and it's an industry standard um t2 lens massive range i think it's 18 lenses in the set that's enough yeah the, the minis have 10 lenses in the range um, so it's everything from 12 to 300 wow. and most everything in between. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's that. Then after that came the 5i, not the S5. It's the 5i. Yep. And the reason is it's the 5i because if you put an S before a 5, certain people then put it into a weird print and it looks like the same fives can look like S's. Yes. And it can get a little bit confusing. In a, in a hurry, you could order the wrong glass from the rental house. Exactly. So it's yes. just called a 5i. Uh, it's our fastest super 35 mil lens at t1.4 okay um at the time it came in the film era and actually the scale markings here mm -hmm. light up so when you're shooting in really dark conditions like and that. behind the camera it's really yeah. dark it's just got this glow um Is that the ra the radioactivity in the lens yes right? exactly yes. exactly <laughs> I'll, I'll go on actually i'll go on to that next <laughs> so um after that in super 35s um in 2016 we introduced spherically the pancro eye classics yeah now the pancro eye classics are a remaking of the original speed pancros i just mentioned earlier unfortunately and there's still some confusion out there when we originally introduced the mini s4s they were introduced as pancros. Right. I see you're beginning to confuse me, so I like this. This is good. Yeah. Um, yeah. We then rechanged the name back to Mini S4 yep. because they didn't have that exact pancro, speed look. pancro look. Yep. And the speed pancro look is going back to what I said earlier. There are more than one cook looks. Yes. Yes. Yes, I understand. There is a there's a basic philosophy, but there's differentiations differentiality in some of the lens series now the pancro i classics going back to the speed pancros is, is that all cook lenses work on the philosophy optically that on access you're sharp so yeah down the middle of the lens you're rock solid you're sharp you're your 200 pair lines or your 100 pair lines your 10k 20k rock solid depending on which series it is now from there we fall away yes. now as i'm looking at you here you're sharp That's wonderful and it falls away. Yes. So the philosophy is based on a dimensionality of a 2D plane, yes. which is flat sensor or film, giving the dimensionality here of the roll off. It's that pop that you're yep. up. It's that pop you're up. And the after. pop from you to the background or from the foreground to you yep. in the focus throw. Yeah. So the dimensionality on, on a 2D plane is trying to give a 3D representation. Yes. Makes perfect yep. sense. Yeah. So we're not interested in sharp to sharp 
No. Because right now, sharp to sharp isn't sharp to me. So why would it be sharp to you? I understand. I get it if you're going to be doing massive billboards and you want your product out there sharp yeah. to sharp. But that's that's fine. That's But that's just not what yeah. our philosophy is. So the, the pancros, though, what you'll find is, is that when you're doing projections of a lens in, in a test room, there's a chart and it has a circle and you have your picture heights and your super 35 or your full frame or your anamorphic frames on which you're projecting a lens to see how well it's sharp corner to corner or where the middle is. The pancros are rock solid sharp and then they fall away. Yeah. Yeah. And where the S4s have a picture height mm -hmm. in the circle and a picture width, before they fall away, or the minis, the fours, and the fives. So that's the moderner look. They they're more forgiving, yep. or they have more sharpness centrally. Yes. But they do fall away. Yes. The pancros fall away, yeah. right away. Right away. Um, and that can be characteristic of all. Well, it's a look that the DP hopefully wants. I mean, that's yeah. why he's, that's why he yeah. or she has chosen them. Yeah. Um, and it especially plays into this effort never-ending drive 4k 6k 8k yeah as we get more and more resolution yeah. you know you naturally need things to lenses to consult well there's another that. point there actually yeah. you went you, you mentioned against okay, resolution because it comes to contrast yeah because if you increase the contrast of a lens it looks sharper it doesn't mean it's sharper, sharper oh. because the lines on the projection the black and white lines you see on projection will look Crisper. harder if they're more contrast in them yes but if you review them up close you'll they're see the that there's no difference yeah, at yeah. All. yeah yeah so um now interestingly about that and um on the pancro classics is he, his here is a misconception and mm. this is this is a true story i got i got phoned up some years back because uh, a dp was using them on a job for the first time yeah and his focus puller hadn't used them before and i got a phone call and he was saying they're not they're not they're not sharp I said, what's the problem from the rental house? They said, um, they're not sharp edge to edge. And I went, but that's what they're meant to be. He said, yeah, but the focus puller said they're new lenses. I said, yeah, but they're, they're new lenses of a vintage design. Yes. And that, that vintage design with the Pancro Classics is we've taken that design from the 1920s. Yep. Stopped making them in 1965, I think it was, where it's sharp on axis and uh, then it falls off quickly and we've redesigned it with modern glass with all of the same sort of refractive indexes yep. coatings or modern coatings producing the same effect you stick it all together and you get modern vintage M modern vintage i like that yeah. that that does explain very well yeah. the characteristics of your glass, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and if you look at something like a 40 mil, you know, the, the front elements are tiny little pieces mm. like that. If you look at an old uh, piece of, uh, an old 40 mil, it's the same diameter. Yeah. So so the design inside what we call the, um, even I've forgotten now what I was gonna say there, uh, of the slug, so that sits inside, that sits inside the mechanics, the, the slug glass, it's all the same. Yes. It's all the same design. Um, we've added, um, the older lenses had varying different iris blades, so we've just standardised that to nine yeah. iris blades. And it's a 270 degree throw focus? Yes, it's a 270, we do it on all of our lenses, dual sided. Yep. Um, we also, from the five eyes up, mm -hmm. you have dual scale, which means that the scale on the uh, lens here, if you take the scale cover off, you can take the scale off, pop it round, put it back in. So yep. this could be feet or meters. Yes. Where minis, pancros, and S4s are all feet. Or if you want a new set of scales, you have to get a new set of scales. I like feet. Yes. I'm old like that. Yeah. I but think in feet. Now, here's the thing. Every scale is individual. To the lens. Every lens yeah. at Cook is scaled to the optic that's inside. So... Though we have, you obviously have to have infinity yeah. and you have to have minimum focus. You may find that a minimum focus on this lens is here and minimum focus on that. Yeah, is past minimum there's focus. There's always going to be those tolerances differences. are slightly yeah. different, always. But as long as yeah. it's hitting what we, it, it yeah. says it should on the paper, then that's where it is. So yes, every lens is an individual. So is this 65 a 64.999 mm. or a 65.111 is to debate but it's a 65 mil. So there's very tiny tolerances in yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and obviously it's dual, dual sided for pulling focus. So you can pull focus from either side. And you'll notice that on all of our lenses, the iris is linear. Yep. 
So therefore, the markings per third stop are the same. They're constant all the way. throughout. Yeah, constant. All the way. So um, that makes it easier rather than suddenly after, you know, from five, six down, it's all getting smaller and smaller. Um, so those are part of the craftsmanship in the mechanics that we put into all of our lenses, regardless if what we say entry level yeah. or the top end of the line. And how is your breathing in the lenses? How do you how, how do you work with that? Um, well, we try and well, obviously reduce breathing because they're yeah. prime lenses, so it's easier yeah. than on zoom lenses. Um, and sphericals are easier to control that with than, yeah, should we same. say, anamorphics, which we may get onto and people are going to listen to for longer yes. when we get onto those later, because that, that is that then not a characteristic. And there are so many different arguments on what you like and what you don't like. Yeah. It's, it's a restaurant. It's a and menu. It is. It is. I like that. It's a menu. Yeah. Definitely a menu. Yeah. And, and there's lots of different pieces of glass that you can choose from. Yeah. Um, to me, your, your lenses, are, it, it's something that you try. And if you particularly like it, you keep going back to the same dish. Yeah. I mean, you know? well, well, yeah. I mean, we all have our favorite dishes. Yes. But I mean, there, you know, there's a lot of as you just said you know it is a lens the new film stock mm. or uh, the lens is now king because it gives the dop that choice and and there's a lot of things about about tweaking of lenses and flares and so mm. on and so forth i mean the mini s4s since introduction have had interchangeable front and back elements to uncoated so if you yeah. want to lower contrast you want to get a flare. so i mean you'll find many things you know the first zoom ever built was it wasn't designed by cook but it was built by cook not many people know that the Technicolor lenses for the three strip color process, Technicolor came to cook, they're all cook lenses. So you look yeah. Wizard of Oz, anything like that, they're all cook lenses. Um, I was actually at a, um, I don't know if I can say his name, a, a very famous Oscar winning German lighting designer. Well done. In his office. Yes. And um, I sat there and I went, oh, sir, as you do call him, uh, who's are those pancros down there? And he said, Charlie Chaplin's and I went how do you know he said because his daughter gave them to me so I mean Chaplin owned his own curse. very good he knew what he liked to be shot on so that dish of what you like yeah what you like you like you like and when you dial it in and you get a particular look hmm. um you know and you do see it in your films hmm. you know there is you, you can tell I, th yeah. I think it's def there it's, de it's definitely a signature um, there is a signature I mean we we've recently started a couple of years ago um they allowed me one of my marketing ideas it was to produce a website called shot on cook and the whole point of the, the shot on cook website is to take a lens series yep. which you can then also uh, define by a genre yeah so you can look at an s4 in a car commercial or you can look yep. at an s4 in a beauty commercial or in a feature film mm. that hopefully in the future will be broken down to sci-fi horror da 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 but as you keep looking at it, you really can pick up, as opposed to tests where you go, oh, I like this about that lens, or I like that about this lens. If you constantly see, you're seeing that signature come in. Um, and I, I sort of liken the signature that people who are not versed in understanding looks and lenses never complain. And if they're the client and they're the customer and they're going, that looks nice, that looks nice. Well, that's a big tip. You're on to a winner. You are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you are on to a winner. Yeah. Have you mentioned the S7s? Yes. So that was yeah. the Super 35 range. And yeah. now we get on to the S7. So obviously, with over the last few years, the introduction of full frame cameras, yeah. we were the first to come out with a um, PL mounted full frame range of lenses. Yep. What was that? That was NAB 2017, I think. I could be wrong. Um, so forgive me if I am. Um, I don't think anyone's going to hold trade shows in the past against you in the, in the current <laughs> Can we remember them? What were they like? <laughs> I will what never like? ever take them for granted yeah. ever again. No, I know. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back to them somewhat. Um, so yeah, um, we brought out the S7s. It's a full range. It goes from 16 mil up to 300 mil. It's um, the full frame version of the S4, shall we say. It's a workhorse. It's a workhorse lens. It's a T2 lens, which actually means in Super 35, it's a T1.4. I mean, in, in full yeah, frame, yeah. it's a T1.4 depth of field. Um, and yeah, we got them out onto the market. We got them quickly out into the market because people like the cook look. Rental companies like to have cook because it, as you say, it gives that signature. People know it's reliable. Again, it's a reliable mechanic. All of those other things that sometimes people just 
you know, they're just delving on the look. But that 270 degree pitch through the way that we run a cam follower um, inside our lenses, which is really simple to service if anything goes wrong, that's all based on long term feedback from uh, ACs. Yes. Because they're the people using them all day long and need to hit the marks. Exactly. And yes, it, the people on the right hand side of the camera are the ones yeah. you need to talk to. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, I mean, I had a, um, this, I'll, I'll give you a really simple little analogy. There was uh, a few years ago, I had to go out to Denmark and there was one of those Nordic Noirs that I watched on telly. And I watched it and after the third episode, the look completely changed. And I, I looked at the credits and the DP remained the same. And I went, you don't do that on episodical TV. There's this really big flare coming mm. in. So anyway, um, I watched it, fine. And then there was gonna be another series. And I went out to Denmark um, and I went to go and see the production company that did it. And uh, the set was still up and I walked onto the set. I was like, oh, so you did it. I didn't realize that's why I'd been brought there. And uh, they said, yes, yes, yes. And um, anyway, we want RS4 serviced and this is the date we restart shooting and some other stuff. I said, By the way, question, why did you have that really heavy look at the mm. beginning? And then it disappeared because I thought it went back. It looked like S4, but it wasn't S4 to start with. And they went, oh, yeah. Um, problem was that those old vintage lenses seized up in the cold oh. and we couldn't use them because yeah. it was so cold. And they had a very predominant flare, mm. which is what they sort of liked. Yeah. But um, because they're the, um, oh, the word's gone from my head because I'm always just obviously used to cam followers um, with our system of, of focusing. Um, helicoid. Yeah. And it, but it, I actually did, did four months in Moscow when I was a younger man. Right. And shooting stills. And... We, I, I, was, I was on an FM2, a Nikon FM2, because right. we, had, we had no electrics, because yep. we were at minus 40. Right. And the oil on the shutter began to coagulate in, in the cold. Yeah. So you might, you, you might put in 125th, but you were getting a 30th. Yeah. Or, it be, you know, it's the same thing. Your, it, your actual mechanics are beginning to break yeah. down. A absolutely. So that's exactly what happened on this job. And so tried and tested, bang, S4s, get them out. No yeah. one noticed. No I one noticed because I was I was looking for it at yeah. the time. Um, and so, yeah, the AC has a big say yeah. sometimes in regards to kitting up to get the DP what he wants. Um, and the other thing is, I mean, I don't know many DPs, if you turn around to them and they've gone somewhere to, to rent some lenses and you go, sorry, we've only got S4s, goes, oh, I can't work with those. <laughs> no. <laughs> because they're such a staple and everyone's been brought up on this. Like, okay, I can work with them. I know what to do. Yeah. They may have their filters they may prefer to use on them, depending on the age of actors or actresses or what yeah. they're doing and how they're shooting. But generally, that's why it's a real staple workhorse. And it delivers. It, it delivers on its focus. It delivers simple servicing. You know, never seizes up. You know, it's a good lens. I mean, I'll talk about it for a second about this relentless push to full frame. Yeah. Um, it's quite interesting that on this camera, the LF, they've just brought out a Super 35 mode. Yeah. Um, for people Because who rental want... houses have a lot of infantry of glass exactly. sitting there and they want to get it out working. So, yeah, yeah that's, a, that, that's a great step forward in doing yeah. that. Um, giving customers another that's, that's another customer, Another customer on the phone just ordering <laughs> yeah, a set of exactly. cooks. Um, um, so, uh, or he may be adding some more lenses to his S4s because really? now he can use them on a mini LF in he... Super 35. <laughs> 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 wow, that's very quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, but um, the, the S7s, um, the, the, well, full frame for us is increasing. Yes. Because well, it, we it's have a announced... It's a relentless move, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. go on. We've announced three one-to-one -one macros. Um, and they should be starting delivering this year, a 60 mil, a 90 mil, and a 150 mil. Now, Cook have never really gone into macros. Mm. Um, it's always been a sort of, when we thought about doing it, the Vogue disappeared. Yep. And when we weren't thinking about doing it, it wasn't there to get the numbers to think about doing it. But this time, we made the decision, bang, we're going to do for full frame, because you've got that fall off in that depth of field yep. as well. Yes. And you've got that higher resolution. Well, that'd be quite interesting because you'd be you'd, you'd, you'd be close, you'd be sharp, but the world would go. Yes, absolutely. You know, yeah, yeah. especially at one to one. Yes, which, it would. Is, <laughs> <laughs> on full frame, it's get for motion as yeah. well. So all of those, you know, um, 
robotics shots and yeah. explosion shots and commercials. So yeah, a lot of people are very interested in getting their hands on those when they come out. We do have um, another spherical macro we introduced with the Pancro I Classic range, which is like this lens is 65, so it's a 65 mil Pancro Classic. That's a four to one macro, but it covers full frame as well. So that dreamy fall off that the Pancros have that's a real special it's not a specialist because it's a normal lens it can be used mm. but it's it's a lens you can bring in to do a pack shot if you want a different look to the rest of the commercial yeah. to give it that real softness and we, we i mean people say that cooks are soft they're, or they're not sharp they are sharp they're rock sharp they're sharp where they need to be they're sharp where they need to be and 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 you let the imagination run right yeah. on the rest of the frame exactly please, you know. so and that's where you get character yes so the c um, word i was waiting yeah, for you to deploy yeah. that we're, we're, we're a characteristical lens manufacturer yeah um and we've always been a characterful lens manufacturer and that's continued to be part of the philosophy of the products that we deliver there's one thing i haven't asked you about mm -hmm. lens data Pro, all that eye data well eye data is yeah. a, a, um, a strange beast mm. because the issue is is that once we hand off that data from that lens into the into any camera whatever it is it's 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 yeah. not our business yeah. we can't force camera manufacturers to take the data we know that VFX and DPs and ACs want that data on the header files of their images yeah but there seems to be an impasse that everyone at the camera side is working through to get that. Right. Um, there are some work throughs that we have. We have a little box you can put on from Ambient because all cook lenses apart from the minis on this side, oh no, it's not, it's on this side of the lens. You'll see you have a data port. That's what's good. Yeah. So that data can be taken out. It doesn't yeah. have to go onto the header file, it can go onto an SD card. I was gonna say, and you then could... that can be read back imported into exactly. the FX. Yeah. Obviously, iData from Cook is an open source platform. So yeah. Um, so Zeiss have taken it and run with it with extended yeah. data. It's basically the Cook platform and they've added a few extra things. Um, and we have some interesting and exciting things coming out later Ooh. this year, but things are happening underneath. There's a lot of interesting, good stuff happening. Good. Um, new stuff is being thought about, products coming down the line. Um, a lot of ideas. I, again, is also, also part of that. Yeah. So yeah, it's a bit of a watch this space at the moment. Um, which is why I'm really happy to be here because I haven't been able to be in front of people telling no, them, don't nice. worry, it's all happening. It's, it's, all nice, happening. it's nice to have, to have you here because I've been stuck talking to people mm. on Zoom and yeah. I hate Zoom. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I've said it. I've said it out loud. It's a, it's horrible. I don't hate Zoom. It's 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 a useful tool for what it does. It's and a, it's been useful in this time. It's definitely been useful, but mm. I still hate it. Yeah. Um, Kerry, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's um, It's been good fun. Yeah. And if anyone's waiting then they can tune into the next part which uh mm. where we go wide mm. wider than you ever thought possible <laughs> thank you so much and we'll speak again very soon thanks jim see you soon